What's going on YouTube? We're going to look at green light and I got some random mini champ 164th so like a German brand I think it's German anyway pretty sure <laughs> kind of stuff that's been from like the mid 2000s we'll look at that kind of came across them at a crazy price at a store that I sometimes check out random stuff and uh, a lot of surprising detail on those vehicles. A couple of them I got. I'm going to squeeze a Mini GT in as well. And, uh, yeah, but mostly green light. A lot of stuff there. Been collecting green light slowly. Um, on the shelves, it's been tough, but all, all the supply chains are really slow, so we know about that. But uh, past couple uh, releases, I was able to pick up some stuff. I don't think I really got had to get anything online recently. Which I'm happy about. Of course, if you're in the United States, Walmart has started carrying green light. Limited supply. They're only running like Hollywood series cars right now, which kind of dipping their toe in the water about that. So hopefully they'll bring out more. I mean, green light will run so many lines in 164 scale. It's hard to stock all of them. I think the biggest one that did it before Meyer that I've seen was Toys R Us. Of course, that's gone. Here, anyway. <laughs> Other countries, Toys R Us is alive and well. Let's take a look. We'll start with some familiar castings that we've seen before, but nonetheless, I collect these. They're good ones. We have the State Wagons. 76 Pontiac Grand Le Mans Safari. 68 Satellite Wagon. 81 Grand Marquis County Park Car. All Estate Wagon Series 6. So, here's the Colony Park Series 6. There's our information in our vehicles. And then the 68. You know about that. And there's our package. So, all the same. Has been the same for quite some time. Let's bring the cars out. This Grand Le Mans is quite the car um, because of the color combination they did. Completely light tan. It's a like a sand color. And they did the matching interior with the full wheel covers. Now this car I think was 76. Yeah. So I think 75 of the car looked different. So 76, 77 cars are kind of similar. We've looked at this casting before. This came out probably a year or two ago. And they did the same type of cars. They have a trailer set. They also have a Smoke and the Bandit set where this car is also in that one. Trailer and car set. They have the Firebird. Or no, they have, <laughs> they have this car painted up like the Sheriff car. And they have the Sheriff car and then they have the trailer. So it's kind of cool. Let's take a zoom on this. So, Grand Le Mans Safari, higher trim level. They had a Safari wagon. The Grand Safari wood trim, most likely. I think you could still get the lead on that, but tighter pattern. Full wheel covers, white walls. That was an option, too, the spoiler. There's our full gate. So, this is the Colonnade cars. We talked about this before when this car is coming out. Greenlight's going to do the other uh General Motors won the Chevrolet Malibu, which was also on this when they had those thin pillars. They all had this hatchback style uh, wagon. Uh, a lot of these would have the seat that popped up from the floor. And GM wagons like this, a lot of times they put the spare tire back here in one of those covers, and then they'd have these bins that you could get. Basically, those were covers for the the tub, the wheel well, that would go in there, kind of like a pickup truck. Rear wheel drive cars, you get six cylinder V8s in these cars. I don't know if 76, you can still get stick shift. I don't think it was stick shift available on the wagons. Might have been able to get like a three on a tree on the sedan or whatever, but that was probably going away pretty much on a lot of these cars. Simple base, this is kind of like their, these two are also engineered this way pretty simply. Not a lot of detail like Auto World, but we've seen on those. All simple bases. We looked at that before. 
has the hitch. That's kind of the hallmark of the series. I think all these cars come with hitches. And you have the tail lights there and the bumper. They all kind of shared that design feature. They didn't really want to put any wiring in the tailgate for lights or anything. Black steering wheel. Um, and I think that interior is painted. It's not molded that color. So a lot of times Greenlight will do that where they'll um, paint the interiors, not just mold them in a plastic. But it's kind of iffy on how much that happens. I've seen it on all sorts of cars. Sometimes they'll mold the plastic in the color and sometimes they'll paint it. It should say, it probably says Grand Le Mans, yeah. So the script out there on the hood. On the front end, it's calling out the trim and difference in grill. So this would have been a 76 grill. We've seen 77, a little tighter pattern. I have it up there somewhere, but you can reference an older video on that. We've seen these. These tend to roll pretty good and uh, no uh, clouding of these windows. So that, again, this depends. A lot of times the ones that have casting when the windows are open uh, sometimes can do a little bit better. But again, that's iffy. This car looked great. I think they're packaged this way. This side was, the rim was just jacked. Sorry, it's, there we go. So, it's got a real wobble to it. And, unfortunately, it's kind of cooked. They really can't address that too well. I mean, I could probably, if I wanted to rebuild the wheel and repaint it, I could do it. But, I don't think it's worth it. So, I might just pick up another one of these. The other thing this has is the the way that this was assembled, you can see um, it needs a dress. So this really car needs to come apart and turn into, be turned into a custom. Basically, i got to take this car apart and find out why the tailgate is being pushed in. Most likely there's some flashing on the pin that's making it do that. So it doesn't want to stay. Other than that, it's interesting. It's kind of a funny silver. It's like a <laughs> this silver paint's real kind of flat, and uh, there's a lot of defects in the paint. It does have the early Grand Marquis grill and headlight set up, and then it has the sharp corner lamps. It was all like that. A little bit of a misalignment there on the tampo, I think. Close. Um, did have the upkick here on the early cars. Kind of looks funny, but that's the way it was. Uh, red interior, so let's go with the silver. Very common to have that color combo back then. Wood grain's decent. Um, white walls are on all the correct side of the tire. Sometimes they'll do the white wall and it'll be on the other side. These all match, so they're getting better at that. And uh, basically 5 liter 302s are used in these cars. Um, Towards the 80s, they're really the early 80s. These cars were fuel injected before GM cars, full size cars, were like Caprice. We talked about Caprice. Caprice were a carburetor really to 86, and uh, you know from there I think they started using fuel injection. But yeah, Ford was leading the way on that, and uh, four speed automatics too. Um, early 80s, so Panthers are a little bit more advanced. Uh, but I say driving them back to back. Caprice and uh, Impala, a little bit sharper handling, I'd say, but uh, that's just me. So the last car, we've seen this too. This is probably one of my favorites and kind of an outside car to pick. This is truly something. I mean, all three of these are, but this is really out there for them to replicate. So I'm really happy that we have these finally. This is one that I've customized a while ago and put the Conline wheels on. Looks like an early Mopar uh, Steely, so decent car came like this white and didn't have to do any tampo removal so this was off the first series of estate wagons they really set the series off with a bang this car is assembled pretty well as well dark green interior green exterior 68 was first year for this type of front end and all that this was kind of a carryover from the mid 60s chrysler cars so it was an evolution in certain respects simple base these cars i think believe are, st are torsion bars cars and they'd have leaf springs back here um, with a chrysler axle stick shifts and v8s and thick six cylinders all available tailgates have been great on these satellite cars they work very well 
I haven't really seen any issues with them. Let's see if we can get the sharper, sorry. Metallic green. It's like a pea green. I like it. Very, very good. Um, the black that they put on the wheel cover is not in the center. So you can see it's not the best. So I didn't want to fix that before you saw it. I have fixed them before. It's very easy. Uh, when you look at the real wheel cover that they're trying to replicate, it did have this black area. Um, and you can kind of extend it out on these cars just to make it look more symmetrical. 68 front grille. We also have 69 and 70. Greenlight did take the time, just like on what we'll see in the XJ Cherokees. We'll see those in a second, but you can see they actually had to recast that doghouse. So even though, I mean, mold is basically the same, they'll make two separate patterns for a couple of different looks. So very similar tails, but... Um, they got cheap and stopped doing the trim going through like those cars. Uh, 69, yeah, this is 69. So you can see the evolution. <laughs> so they were able to get their tooling out, but you still got to make running changes. So there's still differences, which Greenlight does. You know, they they're like, okay, there's cars that will run three to five years and. We can kind of fill it in. In the XJ, you can go from 84 to, um, well, 2001, but the break happened in uh, 2000, no, 97. Yeah, 1997, the XJ kind of had that second-gen version, but we'll go into that later. You can see the differences if you have an eye. You can kind of freeze that and see. So we got the wagons. We looked through that. I've talked about these cars before. Of course, that's the theme here. These are recurring castings that we've kind of talked about. So we do talk about the cars in detail um, on the debut videos. And you can always check those out anytime on the channel. Let's get on. Onward and onwards. Let's go look at some more existing castings but in some new clothes. Well, M-Body Chrysler's always a favorite. This is the 81 Diplomat. I wanted to see this car because it had a funny yellow with the full wheel covers. This is the most recent green light release. There's your information there. Greatest American Hero TV show, 70s, 80s. I think it was more towards the 80s. The guy from I Spy, not Cosby, but the other one, who was also with this guy, and he was some sort of alien or something that had superpowers. Or what or maybe he had something happen to him. I can't remember what it was, but it's a funny show. It's kind of a comedy slash A team type show kind of silly like that full wheel covers on this car i did do my raising on this so this car was slammed like most of them if you want you want an idea of what they get come out of the package this is a prime example i have not touched this car because i kind of like it the way it looks but so yeah the, the wheels are very low we've talked about this before so base was drilled out tapped and i put some screws in and it's riding a little bit more accurately but that's the only thing I've done to it. Um, I have not painted the interior. It is tan. This is an 81 car, so basically 8081 is when this front end debuted um, and went all the way to 89 with some slight updates. <laughs> they do the early 80 interior. I have not seen the airbag wheel. This is always going to be the two spoke steering wheel that I've seen so far. The yellow, just like the white paint, will ghost on the edges. So you can see the underlying metal a little bit easier on these paints that aren't really necessarily metallics that have a lot of thickness to them. They don't adhere to the body very well. Well, here's our engraved 663. And it didn't do too much. I did take the wheels off the axles, try straightening them. This is factory black washed. As you can see, it's kind of not all the way. So, it's you got to be really delicate. If you rub on the green light chrome too much, it actually will expose the underlying plastic pretty quickly. And I've seen that too on Hot Wheels. I think the chrome is just not like the way it used to be. I'm sure they're 
trying to keep cars the same price year after year, things have to change. And I'm sure the chrome plating is thinner. But we've looked at this car. I kind of like it in the yellow. There's my redone brown one. Um, I really like this one. Most people like this one. This is a pretty cool one. So I got a few few of these for the stash because I'm probably going to try doing one that's... Uh, I'm going to take the this top off and under underneath that will be this paint. So... We'll try doing more of a cop car version with the brown because that's like the car that was in the movies. There's dark brown with the police wheels, so gotta have that. Moving on. More Hollywood stuff. This was the same thing that came out the American Hero. We have the 79 Country Squire, the one with the weather weathering treatment. So almost didn't get this car. I have not bought the Charlie's Angels Crown Vic wagon because i don't like the blue on it but this one i got because i thought it'd be fun for we'll do a double header and then 83 ltd i always like the square bag so we got that as well so you know we got the big three now we got the caprice and the the ltd and the uh the uh, dodge diplomat grand fury So two Fords, so 79 really, that came out in late 78, I think, but 79 car, Panther, and um, of course it shares with the Mercury and the Lincoln, but here we go, weather, nice weathering treatment, they put these kind of steely wheels, but they really have a center cap on them still, it's supposed to be one without hubcaps on it, um, yeah, but it's, it looks good. They do great. They have that airbrush job kind of thing that it goes through where the dust is applied. And they do a good job. Looks really good. Actually, the rust looks nice too, but it's a great weathered car. They look good. When most of the cars that you buy at this scale, you know, are kind of like factory looking fresh. Seeing some of these weathered ones are kind of neat. So I'm kind of more into getting a few of them when they're castings that I like. Like the van or the wagons. Let's take a zoom. See if we can get a little bit more stuff on camera here. The white wall on that tire is atrocious. Really didn't work out very well. But the rest of the car is good. Didn't really see too many issues. Some flashing there hanging down from the ceiling in there. So that's some stuff I can get out later. But the paint is applied nicely. I really like the way the the flat spray went all over the whole thing. So, really neat. Not heavily applied in any other area. And probably if you look at these cars, the way this is done, I bet, uh, n you know, no two are going to be exactly the same. Let's see what number I got. I don't even think I paid attention to this one. So, since these are probably being distributed in a wider margin, I'm sure there's a lot of these. I did get under four digits, so that's pretty good. Eight ninety five. It's always kind of fun to try to get an early stamp early run car you know they can make 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 I mean I'm sure the sky's the limit okay so we looked at this and then real quick talked about this this is another car that would improve from a little bit of customization this is how it comes out of the box the biggest issue with the car is they use these really nice steel rims that look very accurate they have the relief for the um, holes now this really is like the Ford Mustang wheel that had a four lug under it so that's really what this is but these early Fords had a wheel that looked similar they did the opening here wasn't as large there was more of a traditional steel wheel but if you get these sitting right inside the fenders the car looks pretty good put a coat of gloss black on this because a lot of times this is just unfinished black plastic once you get those a little bit shinier that actually helps it stand out from the tire but the body is great the way they do the thin pillars and how they have the windows really set inside there that looks a lot you know more accurate than what we've talked about like let's say on the caprice on the model car group caprice where they have those windows too flush it looks a lot better when it has some dimension. The only issue is they do have, on the back I mean, there's some issues on the car. 
is this. Uh, their taillights are good. They're separate, but there's a lot going on. There's a lot of pieces. These cars are assembled, you know, lots of them. And they're leaving some things to chance in terms of quality control. And M2 runs into this, too. The idea of having separate parts are great if you take the time to put them in and take the flashing off. But if you're doing these things on a time schedule, some of that stuff kind of falls away. Also, this is, you know, very common. And it's kind of a small gripe, but it's kind of funny, too. They run two different profiles. And that's good because then you can kind of change the look of the same tire. Of course, they really get confused. And a lot of times they'll just flip that around. So they won't match, which is kind of funny too. I guess if the the department was running low on one tire, they might have some mismatched. I like the light bars though. This is these Jetsonic bars. They look really cool. Good scale. They hit real low. A lot of times they'd run this slightly more forward because they'd run the strap here where the door closes, but some of them are right in the center too. But you can change it. Um a couple of examples. This one's kind of been around for a while. We just have to file that down in there. You can see the factory one sticks out. So that's all you do. And then it improves the look of the back spacing on the car. Let's see. Can we? Yeah. So a lot better. Of course, that front end got real beat up because it does get. Uh, pocket duty sometimes and here's my black one same thing black one's a masterpiece i mean if you have this if you find this one get it it's a great one uh, it's very slim that they manufacturers make plain cars that look so well done so i got a few of these in the stash now i use the updated tire that doesn't have a lot of flashing issues and this is coming online with their newer releases these type of tires a lot of times they're still running these smaller profile ones. And you can see how they sit on the rim. So this needs attention because there's flashing on this tire as well. It needs to be flipped around. And I'm kind of torn between running the smaller tire, which is on the back. Once you clean it up, it looks pretty good. Or this beefy one. I have trouble. I mean, the beefy one looks good, but it's almost too perfect where this one has a little bit more character. So I'm kind of torn. And the 80s cars, their rubber was getting online with the high performance high-speed radial tires, but they still work narrow in their scope. And this one kind of looks like a truck tire, so I'm kind of I'm kind of debating which ones to run. But, uh, yeah. So this will get the treatment. This is a cool one because this is a pure white, where this early one was a, a tan. And uh, this would probably translate to more customization options. Hopefully the people that run the blank police cars through green light um, the police car models people um, will run a, a square Vic uh, plane livery soon maybe we can order some of those all right more vehicles more vehicles let me take a little bit of water here well got this Volkswagen it's kind of neat let's take a look at these two guys we have a 68 Type 2 double cab truck, and then we have a Type 2 panel van. I wanted to get the panel van because of the Brumos livery, and there's a lot of that Porsche stuff that I like. I don't load up on it too much, but some of their cars are pretty good. So it comes in the V-Dub Club, and this one is uh, Series 13. This has been around for a while. They make a lot of exclusive Volkswagen castings. I don't know if I've seen the thing can't remember i've seen most of the other ones that are in that including the new beetle i think that was also and then we have the new hitch and toe which was just kind of neat because it was kind of a plain looking uh, car setup so we'll look at that too there's your vehicles i haven't got the ford the orange ford uh, a little bit of green light quality too bumper so I'll put that on for you but i didn't want to lose it that was loose i like this one because it's the one right before the, the last version of it that came to the States. So it's kind of a good mix of old and new. And that one that came out in the late 70s, early 80s. So it's cool. Crew cab. I mean, it's neat. 
well, extended cab. And then we have the teardrop that's been around forever for green light. And you got your little stove there and then your quarters up there. These can be towed by pretty much anything, really. Especially this thing, because really, <laughs> 50 to 70 horsepowers on these air-cooled. I mean, they're not that great. Maybe a little bit more. Uh, it's awesome. The engine's underneath the bed. And uh, this version had the fold-down sides. Very European. Kind of looks good without the bumper, to tell you the truth. Kind of rolled out like that. So, maybe I'll leave it off. There's this. There's our underside. Kind of a good attempt by Greenlight to do some of the detail. These are kind of interesting vehicles, how they run. Oh, the other thing, too, I noticed, yeah. We got the Phillips head, so maybe I'll take this apart sometime because the wheels aren't the best um, running. They're not the truest. They look good, though. We got a great profile. Even the VW is stamped in there pretty well. I don't think we've ever really looked at these green lights. They've been around for a while. Just haven't been interested in too many of them. And this one is the earlier van. Looks more like a Type 1. Does it say Type 1? That says Type 2. Huh. Is that one Type 3? I feel like it's a Type 3. I'm calling that a Type 2 as well. But of course, this one, the other one's not. Newer than this one. This is like kind of like the first one that they did. So really ancient. But uh, it's got the rack and it's got the same wheels and tires. Uh, they need a little assistance as well. But the livery is very good. So very excited about this this vehicle. It's got the yellow headlight lenses too. I don't know. So, some cool stuff there. And that'll go go with the Porsches that we have on the shelf. Alright, we're getting down there now. So, this is one that I got loose. I picked up loose. Let's take a look. Just down on the card for this. I can't remember the release. I'll try to look it up and put it below for you. All the cars, remember, are, will be in the description with their... Um, you know, if there's a series, they'll be have a series number and the color and all that. So, you'll be able to... Search for them yourself. You know, you take that, and uh, if you like the car, just find it. So this is a 70 Monte Carlo. And recent, recent release. Uh, fast couple years. First year for this car. First year for Monte Carlo. It was a personal luxury coupe. Chevrolet. Very popular um, segment of the cars back then in the 60s and 70s. Of course, it went away into the 80s but really this was a very popular option for your vehicle even if you did have other people in your family you could still put them in this vehicle and still kind of have it and it would have enough space uh to do that so because they were so big this was still a muscle car in 1970 they really were trying to be like the charger and those type of cars the bigger stuff like the rivieras you can get big black chevrolet in this car um serious transmission and you can do a lot of luxury options you get leather you get the vinyl top and all that so it's a really cool car they made this body style i think to 72 or three and then in three to or four all the way to like mid 70s and then we have the rg bodies that we like all the way to i think it was 88 was the last year for monte carlo basically when general motors Drop carburation in their passenger cars is when these kind of cars fell away. Cutlass also went away in the late 80s. So green on green on green. Very nice. It has the Chevy Rallies. This car has the old school style of build. Even though this is a newer casting with the big fat tires on the muscle car rims. It was kind of green lights past. It was kind of like that. So it's kind of funny they still did it on this car. Ride height's decent. It's a little high. But these cars were kind of high like that factory they do need this does need a wheel and tire change i'm just trying to find something to use put on it because the rest of the car has a great detail to it the front end looks good we got to take off that stripe on there so they put the tampo on the windshield it's not looking right so that has to come off but the rest of the car is decent it's got those monte carlo taillights done pretty good might need a foil job up on the top here where it's painted to tie that red together. But other than that, it's pretty good. Just some off-the-table thoughts right now. 
car had that kind of split bench system going on. No tampo on this because it was loose and it might be a pre-pro. I, I just haven't verified that yet. So there's the Monty. I'll probably talk about one of those. I'll probably get the gold one if I find it. So here's some other stuff that we've seen in other castings. Let's look at uh, a checker and a Ford Club wagon. Now this one's an exclusive. And I had to get it because I like Chicago P or Fire Department and a PD too. Got a lot of those cars. Um, but here you go. So this one's got the old school black and red. I love it. And the gold lettering. So hobby exclusive. I'm trying to snag the police hobby exclusive of, the, of this vehicle. It's kind of like the brochure van that Ford used in their literature. It's the blue on blue, I think. Or blue on white with the, with the blue uh, gumballs. That's the one I want to find next. But this one looks great. This, again, is one of Greenlight's finest castings. They've done very well with the scaling on this. And even using their off-the-shelf tires, it works with this vehicle at this scale. Because they, ha you know, they have to take the median of the tire sizes to kind of work with everything. But it works perfect with this. And Tampa work is excellent. Clear windshields, pretty much. Um... These hobby exclusives usually are pretty pretty good. They usually don't have any issues with them. And this one doesn't disappoint. They even tampered the glass, which makes it that extra feel to it, like a more expensive model. So I like that a lot. Painted bumpers, white. Still got the club wagon detail right there. That's kind of funny. Just a great vehicle. Nice and shiny. Now I kept the rows of seats in there, but... Who who knows how they would have set it up? You know, they might have had a bent bench backwards, or that was all cleared out in the back. This could have been just to use the transport guys, you know, that were needed. Who knows? You know, they're trying to show it as an ambulance. So pretty cool. Just a great looking truck. Look at that emblem on the door. Just great. So I like this a lot. Let's look at this uh, checker because this would have been a car that. Uh, would be ordered for someone to drive look at this thing so i thought i had this but i don't so when i saw it for sale i got it so this is a mecham car um series four 72 checker so this is getting towards the end i mean the early 80s was the end for the checker but you know not many people were buying this car but look at this six cylinder car so it'd been an inline six with general motor six uh gold paint 145 produced with the with the vinyl, you know, same owner, 5600 miles. Never took it out. And these things are enormous. If you look at them in real life, yeah, they're big. They're really big, and it's a big that's different than a caddy. It's more like a truck big because of how tall they are, and they're beefy. It was meant to take the abuse. Um, but yeah, what a family car, you know, instead of getting a wagon, you can get this. They did have a wagon body style, this too. Hopefully Greenlight does it. Let's zoom in, sorry. There we go. Yeah. Get the Meekum tags on everything. But just a really neat car, and this would have been kind of like brand new, with the low miles, and being inside, not exposed to the elements. Now it says inline six on the literature, but... They're just using them. what they've used in all of them is that eight cylinder. But the finish is nice on this, and unlike the other police car, they don't do the big posts on the front, so the front tires have a a good offset. So they corrected that issue on this casting release at least. So a neat representation of a rare car in real life. I'm sure there's nothing else like it. If there was only 45 of them, I'm sure this is the nicest one of all of them. And it still only went for, in today's market, 10 4 So, that's funny. Dang, 10 grand. That's, that's great. What a deal. Now, even though the car, uh, well, even though, the, I guess you could probably still get body panels because they're the same for so long. Um, but... The engines, the drivetrains, all that stuff's off the shelf from other manufacturers, so probably be a cheap car to get into. 
It's kind of a neat number, 2992. That's kind of cool. All right, so there we go. Um, we talked about this cartoon before, so we'll, we'll move on to some other stuff. All right, now we're getting into some new green light stuff. Let's take a look. Well, this one's kind of old, but I want to show you a custom treatment I did to it. Let's back these cars up a little bit. Let's make some room. We'll put this uh, forward back there. Another hobby exclusive before we move to some new stuff. This is the fire department of New York. Hobby exclusive. This is the Vandora. I wanted this car because this was like the old school 80s red that they ran, which is that more kind of like an orangish red. And um, fuel communications unit truck. I switched the wheels and tires. They use what was like on this van, which I haven't had duplicates yet but we have our nypd van we always have these kind of rallies but they stick out too much and tires too small etc well i had this from the short bed green light and that looks a lot lot better and it sits in the, the fenders correctly so really brought this van to life for me and i really really like it so let's take a look authentic graphics it's got the mid to late 80s Vandura script. Even though it's got that two-piece body that I kind of don't like, it, it works here because it's painted correctly and it's the gap is kind of kind of close. Of course, having the right wheels and tires really helps. It really does. Let's move this money out of the way. So I think it looks good a lot better than and, and the casting is great it's got the right width and height uh, unlike their earlier vans that they did the 70s GM vans this looks a lot better they didn't do the black window treatment or the weather stripping so I kind of like it at this scale kind of kind of leaves the eye just to look at the tin and windows tail lights are red on red but they use a foil type red it's a little bit more reflective, so it sticks out well. I don't, I don't understand the running lights there. It's kind of weird, but really neat. Let's see if we can get really close to that. Let's see if we can look. Wow. It's kind of blurred. <laughs> That's fun. All right. So I looked at this. We kind of talked about these vans before. I love them. And you want to see what that grill looks like underneath there. Just a well done grill. So it's hiding under that bull bar. But they do a good job on that too. So all this van needs is just the right wheels. You can see how terrible it looks like that. Versus like a real wheel tire. Uh, the only other thing I need to do really. Because this is a three quarter or one ton van. Most likely. I don't think they'd use half ton. Um, you got to raise that rear end up. I mean I know they'd have equipment in there. But these vans I mean. I'm dry. The suspension on the leaf on that van, the leaf spring is very, very heavy duty. These things rarely squatted down um, with those floating axles and all that. So that would be one thing I'd like to change. Maybe drill a hole in that and um, put the the floating axle piece coming out of the, the um, hubcap. Because Ford had hubcaps that covered that. But uh, John Motors, I think, let them stick out. So... But that would be kind of cool, too, as an upgrade. But I'm talking a little bit too much. All right. This is great. Let's look at this. I refuse to get the um, monster truck version of this, but I got the regular one. And I saw this. This is great. It even has those early uh, turbine wheels that GMC Pontiac used. Uh, these wheels are really like the Firebird and the Fiero. But when you look at the period pictures, those rims are more um, the truck kind of they they ran one too so that's a replica of those wheels it looks like it's hand black washed because they're all kind of slightly different the way the black shows through look at the graphics this is 1984 gmc s15 so this is like the s10 same vehicle this is basically um came out in early 80s and that body style it's hobby exclusive but you can get these these are pretty a lot of these are made Really cool. Love the graphics. Um, it's got a removable tonneau cover. So look at that. This has ground effects. These ground effects are molded in into the uh, casting. 
They also have a stock version of this too. And then they do the different grills for the years. This is the first time GM was pulling in-house the mini trucks. I mean, they were always pulling from outside North America's, you know, engineering and things. They were bringing in, like, uh, Mazdas and Nissans and whatever. I, whatever they had. One of those partnerships, a Zuzu, that kind of thing. And then they realized in-house was good. Let's do it. And they did. And then we had this truck all the way to... To when they got rid of it, basically, when all those trucks went away in the late 2000s, mid-2000s. But here it is. Of course, now the ones you have are not based on these. You could put a 4.3 liter six-cylinder. The early 80s, you had the smaller sixes, like I think like a 2.8. And then you always had the four-cylinder, the old Iron Duke. So you had that too. So a pretty stout um, truck. They had the mind to make an extended cab as part of production. They also had a short bed. Like this one, they had a long bed version. They had a four wheel drive, and uh, they had a Baja version, which uh, which is going to be a four wheel drive special that Greenlight's going to do. So that's going to look kind of cool. Um, but yeah, the later models had you know the nice fuel injection systems, and they had the big four three Vortec in them, and all that. So like ninety to ninety three to ninety four in that range. That's a cool one to get the old square body S tens and Jimmies. This hood does not open. They do the style like the Silverado and the, and the um, Sierra trucks, where they use this hood to do the monster trucks, where they have the the motor sticking through. So this is just riveted on there, unfortunately. Deep bed, and we got that old school '80s style hanging over the side Tonto. So I thought that was kind of neat. It only goes on one way. Do that thing. So this is cool. I love the two tone on it. And the rims and the graphics and all that stuff. It's just great. Uh, pace car for this year, I can't remember. Um, I'll put it down in the comments if I can remember to do that. I was, I was obviously, it was a General Motors product and it wasn't going to be a Chevy. So it's probably Pontiac or an Oldsmobile or something like that. Cutlass was coming on board soon. So you can see all that. They'd have bent seat, bucket seat, they'd have column shift automatic, they'd have a stick shift on the floor. Um, these are just cool trucks. What's good about this, like this and the Ranger, is that they'll take small block V8 power pretty relatively easily, especially nowadays since the truck's been around. There's conversion kits, and that's kind of a cool thing to do as well. Even if you take an old junky 305 out of something and put it in these light trucks, you still got something going for yourself. A lot of GM, but we're going to do Chrysler. But before Chrysler, this was AMC and AMC Renault. So French times. So 1984, this was the last big project inside AMC before they got bought out by the French. Here they are. We have a 97 and a 93, so that's really great. So I was talking about first and second gen XJs. And we have them right here together. Green just socked it to us. They're going to be doing a wide release of these in all their platforms, but they did Hot Pursuit basically first, um, and here they are, and these are pretty much sold out. You can get them when you buy the whole set. There's a whole set of the Hot Pursuit 38 around, so you'd have to get that, but you'll get these two with the set, and then there's the other vehicles. Let me see. So, 74 Monaco and the Cherokees, GTR. Uh, Intercept Utility, which Sterling Heights, Michigan, didn't get that one, didn't get the Tahoe. Tahoe flew off, too. That's a new thing as well for people to buy, but I've had two of these in my lifetime, a two-door and a four-door, and both are stick shifts, so rare, rare, rare stuff, and I loved it. They drove great. These were unit construction vehicles, no frame, no body on frame. They're extremely light. The running gear was kind of heavy-duty. They were Dana. And Chrysler axles later on. Four-wheel drive. Solid axle trucks. Even the two-wheel drive versions of these had basically just a tube with the coil springs on it. So <laughs> even converting it to four-wheel drive is relatively simple. This is the later model one with the rounded front and rear. Door panels and the roof are pretty much identical to the early XJ. But you can see it was a lot more square. AMC... Uh, 
American Motors Corporation was in dire straits. Jeep was really draining a lot of their funds. But this was basically developed off of the old AMC Concorde and the Eagle four-wheel drive sedan cars and wagons. They used kind of the mix of those parts and a brand new sheet of paper on this. But um, they learned most of the lessons for this vehicle on that platform. So unit construction. Now they use coil springs on the front and leafs in the rear. But they still use the inline six that AMC was famous for. So we had the inline six power and four cylinder power from different manufacturers. I think uh, Renault did provide some motors for early times. They also had a V6, believe it or not, and the early ones. And uh, basically, this vehicle debuted in 1984, and in this version went to I think 2000 or 2001. And these still command a lot of money. If they're clean and they're not rotted out. Of course, that was very common for these to have rust issues. Chrysler bought out um, AMC. And I think it was 87 or 88, basically, is when that happened. And they took the Jeep from there. So they kept this body style with the squareness. Updated it slightly. Took over the development of the 4-liter engine. The inline 6. And added Chrysler fuel management to it. So it had multi-port fuel injection. And a uh, new electronics package to take it into the 90s. And it was just a great vehicle. A lot of torque on that motor. I had the early and late version of that motor. And it, the, both of them are amazing. The updates that they did to this 4 liter went back to the old 4 liter with Chrysler fuel and, uh, management as well. And uh, they're, just, they're just awesome. Of course, a lot of parts support for these vehicles. And um, they're just really neat. It's kind of like you're driving an old car and a new one at the same time. There's your running gear. Greenlight does the old style where they slap on the old plastic axles, but it works because they did not want to have the issue with the blazers that they did where the car was too low. So we have the early rims, and I think when Highway Patrol was using these for real, they would, do, they would have tested these. These were a police package vehicle in the 80s and 90s. Uh, Chrysler did police package. If you look up, a funny fact, when these ran on the track, in a few years, and I don't know if it was the late 80s or early 90s, but it was in that time period when we had all those other cars, like the Crown Victoria and the Caprice, this actually had the best lap time. And even with the inline four, it was because it handled so well, it could take the corners faster. So outlight acceleration was very close as well, if you look at the 0 to 60 times. So they're they're kind of neat, and they do handle well. I had a stock and lifted, and uh, the stock could take corners. <laughs> it's, they're funny. They're really funny. And um, they used to have a full-time all-wheel drive type system where you can do high and low, and they also had the shift on the fly two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive, which I had. I preferred that. You don't want to have a constant four-wheel drive happening it just sucks some of the early systems all-wheel drives now not a problem but back then we had real transfer case it was a waste of energy both rim style this rims carried on to the late ones but the 80s ones were the ones that started that re wheel style so that's kind of cool there and nypd used them as well so there we go some of the two cents on that a couple more vehicles look, look at some high-end stuff Mini champs, believe it or not. We have a Cayenne and a Boxer. So two Porsche cars. I think we got this is the first gen Cayenne. I found these in a the store for a good price and I, I picked them up and they got kind of cool. <laughs> Look at that. That that person and this person, they really like their cars. But we all do, don't we? That we all do. So here's it is, and this is again like 2008 time frame is what from what I can remember or see from here, from what I've done. They make 164th, but it's not as popular as the 143rd or even 118th scale cars that Mini Champs does. But they always have a high degree of build quality. So I was like, well, what's what's in it for me on on this scale? I do have a couple of 143rd scales from way back. And after looking at these cars for quite some time, there's actually quite a bit of stuff they offer, just like their other vehicles. So they did not disappoint at this scale whatsoever. The only thing about it is they have these funny generic tires that are kind of like Hot Wheels tires. But the rest of it is just amazing. Even the wind scarf um, that's in between the seats and the boxer looks really good. 
great, great uh, headlights and taillights. They even do the foiled emblems. So, just like the big 118 scale cars. Let's see if we can get it to the zoom. Hold on. I think I might have wiped some of this off on one of the vehicles. The brakes are back there. And I think those are photo etched brakes. So that was another thing that took me a couple of days to even notice. Um, this is like, even though it's built like a Kyosho, it has the plastic base, and we'll look at that too. Um, it's got, a, it's great. I mean, they painted the dash. They didn't just leave it all black. Look at the, ga <laughs> the gauges. Um... We saw the rotors, the brake rotors, the emblems. Just, they are pieces of foiled emblem, you can see. So, really well worth the investment. They also come with their own case, so we will be putting probably them back in the case. Just for the fact that getting dust in all these areas, I'll back up on this so you can get the overview real quick of what this car is. So, first gen Cayenne, I believe. This is a, a, a GTS. So, this is, or GT, yeah, this is GT3. GTS, yeah. So, the high spec Cayenne. Uh, I think it was either normally aspirated or um, twin turbo eight cylinder. This was off the Volkswagen Touareg, believe it, or believe it or not. So that was actually a really well-developed chassis. So for when to use that, I've driven the uh, not the Cayenne. Actually, I think I've driven Cayenne, but definitely a few Touaregs. They're great vehicles. I'd like to have one, actually, probably, but they're hard to find here in the States. They did discontinue the most recent release of it in North America, unfortunately. So we're stuck with what we have built. There's our rotors. Just just great. I mean, they, it does have the silly tires, but other than that, everything is there for this scale. Yeah, see, the C came off when I was touching it, so I don't trust myself to be around these cars too much. Uh, that's a little big. I mean, you can see that wheel wells look a little bit bigger than the tire there, but, I mean, this thing rolls perfect, and it's just well-built well painted so and there's the Porsche uh, emblem on the front there so really very strong car I think it was the, to overtook the Mercedes high output SUVs for the being the fastest for a while so kind of cool you know what I mean kind of cool I think we looked at everything we needed to look at yeah Auto World is going to be collecting slowly they're also having trouble getting over you know to us and here when we want to consume them and so i'm waiting but i think these are gonna are a great hit i'm gonna get the civilian versions of them as soon as they hit the shelves or whenever hopefully that's soon but uh i'm definitely loving those and these are just a cool surprise these are kind of old so they're kind of hard to find now but i came across them so i was like all right i'll get it i'm, I'm surprised i like having all the different manufacturers Look at that thing. Just amazing. So, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for all the new subscriptions. Really appreciate it. Uh, more to come. And uh, thanks again. Till next time.